Hi all, I have an absolutely magnificent trolling game of Leela Chess to show you today. So Leela was playing against Chiron in the Blitz Battle 5 minutes with a 2 second increment in the Chesscom Blitz Cup 2018. So D4 from Leela. No trolling so far, but this gets quite amusing pretty soon actually. C4, E6, Knight C3, we have Tarash Defense. C takes, E takes, knight f3, knight c6. And now trolling Leela plays not, not the most popular move. Maybe she hasn't discovered that yet in training, but plays D takes C5. I think she's just laughing at us humans because this happens to be a remarkable game in chess based live book, Wesley So versus uh, Rusen Akobian, which was a default win for Rusen because uh, Wesley had made some notes on his score sheet. So there's a historical context here, D takes C5. The more standard move is G3. Uh, for example, this position, this, this variation has been seen in a lot of games in the Tarash where white plays for the c5 square by taking on c6 and tries to lock that c5 square. And it's thought to be about equal uh, chances actually. But d takes c5 is actually very interesting in its own right. And it does invite, positively, it invites d4. But this has actually been seen in quite a few uh, over the board games. Most notably, there's actually a Vichy Anand game against Matthew Sadler in this line. Uh, which happened in London 2014. It went like this. Bishop takes, check. And here in the Vichy Annan game, Vichy Annan played e3 here. So this is a, a legitimate line. And it ended up in a draw, actually, this, this Vichy Annan against Sadler game. So, but anyway, in this game, we have Bishop takes c5, Queen takes d5. And it's as if Lila doesn't care about the massive gambit compensation here, which I find actually quite amusing. Uh, for me, this triggers a memory of a game of Jim Plaskett, watching him play uh, an over the ball game against another grandmaster. And he was, he lost with black and he, I remember him looking at all his pieces being super aggressive. And it's as if Leela also doesn't care about black's pieces here being super aggressive. Uh, on there's an alternative here, queen b6, but check is actually quite annoying to play e3 now. And this is actually a small edge for white. So anyway, we have queen e7. Queen e4, this is a very good, solid move indeed. It has been seen before over the board. Knight f6. And it actually, with bishop e6, there actually appears to be a very quick win, as in uh, freak against uh, Goosen's um, Freak was a 2300 plus player. Goosen's about 2000. This happened in Vissingen tournament 2016, which ended quite quickly after these moves, where Black castled Queenside and just seems to have a terrible position here and actually resigned here, believe it or not. So this, this has been seen before, but uh, Chiron plays knight f6, which I think is more in the spirit of things. And look at all of Black's pieces. They're quite aggressive. Yeah, I just found this kind of amusing bishop d2 uh is white's well, in a better position now to handle things like knight b4 which hits c you know the c2 square white can play something like rook c1 maybe sometimes rook d8 e3 and now look at this bishop f5 look at all of black's pieces they look really quite dangerous uh you know this bishop is is active very very active knights uh Okay, so it, it does look very active and dangerous to me, all of these possibilities. So what does Leela do? Bishop e2. It's it's just looks a pawn up, but can black not do anything with all this activity? Rook a c eight is played. If we look at knight b4 here as an alternative, white can just castle her castle and after bishop d3 a3, this position is okay uh, for white. This scenario gets to be really solid for white. And the extra pawn in the center is actually really handy for outposts on d4 and f4. So this is a really important extra pawn here, extra central pawn. So activity isn't everything if you have to sacrifice like a central pawn. Rook a c8, h3, king f8, white castles. 
black tries to do something tactical now knight e5 because there's pressure on this d2 bishop trying to lure the, the knight away from protecting d2 here so what does the leader play here which i find quite amusing <laughs> let the trolling really begin now <laughs> he just plays bishop c1 this really is the best move just bishop c1 saints black come and get me if knight takes e5 is played here then th there's a bit of activity this should actually be about equal so forget that bishop c1 knight c6 knight goes back on knight d3 it turns out g4 is actually very useful for white for example this position uh is very very nice uh, so that's that's going to be in white's favor and if we look at this again uh, instead of knight d3 um, let's look at well let's look at an alternative here instead of bishop e4 rather let's have a look at bishop g6 here knight e5 again and actually white ends up with a nice target on c5 here so for example this is a nice advantage for white so yeah knight the knight just goes back to c6 and Leela in a it seems an underdeveloped state I mean this you wouldn't normally go out of your way to have this kind of position with all of black's pieces out of the box here but we have rook d1 just saying okay let's have a pair of rooks off what are you going to do to me now rook d8 now just b3 and another move trying to lure the defensive knight away from d1 but it's adequately uh, responded to protecting the knight and protecting d1 with the rook now as well so no problem uh yeah n yeah otherwise it's a total disaster of course if we look at taking then there's rook takes d1 check um, absolutely winning of course so bishop b2 very logical knight takes bishop takes and now bishop a3 so what has actually black got in terms of compensation it seems to be rapidly evaporating whatever compensation there was g4 bishop g6 and now knight h4 trying to just get that light square bishop and maybe take over this diagonal even later bishop e4 f bishop f3 now is played bishop takes knight takes we have rook d3 and now the bishop just drops back to d2 here h6 rook d1 okay going into a self pin but the king can come to the rescue with things like king f1 to e2 so it's only a temporary issue king f1 and actually here in fact Leela inflicts a pin tactically with knight d4 a very nifty move to contest this d file and further simplify so black played knight takes d4 here on knight e5 then bishop c1 for example uh, is very very nice for example bishop takes this knight f5 check and then knight takes g7 trying to drag the king away uh, from the rook but then taking a big advantage to white thanks very much two pawns up there absolutely winning really so knight d4 we have knight takes d4 and now exploiting the pin so bishop c3 so things are getting more simplified where is black's compensation and the funny thing is Leela is now fully equipped with table base integration and knows that this this is a very favorable end game rook c5 we have rook c4 wanting the trade of rooks uh here now we have king e2 uh yeah otherwise the king could actually be getting too aggressive and hitting these pawns there so king e2 rook a5 a4 b5 check king c6 and we have now f4 h5 is played on b takes a4 here then rook takes a4 is nasty because it's on a7 and if rook b5 well let's have a look at this this is just a winning king and pawn ending and anything else is is pretty hopeless here if rook b5 we just snap off a7 and then f7 winning so we have king b6 and the rooks come off sorry in that variation sorry so king c6 we have f4 h5 so Leela just plays g5 now f6 h4 f5 and now creating a pawn majority e4 by taking out that pawn a pawn majority now has emerged a three to two pawn majority so um yeah things are getting easier it seems b takes 
rook takes rook f5 that pawn is now protected yeah it's more hassle just to take here and allow this because then you'd have to come back to a4 to protect h4 so that would still be a good advantage but this is easier rook f5 to just protect the pawn uh, so a5 and now the queen side is just dissolved simplifying and I, and we're starting to transition to a very clear table based position soon I believe you'll see from the evidence of some of the weird moves coming up very soon the king goes to b5 here it's quite far away from these pawns you'll note rook a8 check and the king comes and now to hunt down that g7 pawn to create actually now free connected past pawns so one pawn goes then the other goes and now we start to have hilarity rook e7 now i i checked this game out actually from my uh <laughs> iphone <laughs> walking gaily in the park and i was thinking did something go wrong with the game score on this game surely this is just nonsense why why the move rook e7 here i i really thought it was some technical issue or something but it turns out this is just a table based win uh, to take here is a pure table based win the king uh, is not Superman it's just too far away from these pawns these pawns are just full steam ahead free connected past pawns outweighs the rook so it's quite hilarious in a way that this rook is offered and as he is rejected <laughs> so the the opponents also table basing this perhaps and, and not liking that if we look concretely just to show why this is absolutely winning yeah the king's just too far away the the connected passports just easily win smash through here actually so we have actually check and then hilarity continues with rook d7 and i'm really thinking there's a fault here rook c7 even saying look you can even step your king a bit further taking my rook and i'm still winning with the pass pawns rook d8 one small step for the h pawn Harry the H pawn and now Rook A7. <laughs> Lila is really wanting to transition and simplify this further, but she does make a little bit of progress soon with her pawns soon. Uh, G6 and now A6 like offering G6 here. Okay, so white uh, black played brown Rook E3 check on Rook takes G6. Uh, this is still a table weight a base win after rook d7 for example here this is just a winning king and pawn ending after taking that that pawn's just winning so uh we have check and now yeah Leela doesn't mind about really doesn't mind about the king getting even further away from these absolutely winning past pawns so this is a fine interesting entertaining technique uh demonstrated here check <laughs> rook b7 and check yeah <laughs> now rook b2 so offering h6 that's not taken because there's always g7 anyway things like g7 and it carries on yes a lot of fun here check okay rook b1 yeah i really thought there was something wrong with the game sport score but apparently this is this is really what happened this is really what happened so rook c1 uh <laughs> yeah okay and uh rook b1 okay now finally queening deciding to queen okay uh check here wanting to give up the queen now check there yes yes it's very very amusing black's run out of any pieces and uh Lila wants to go into another proven as long as it's a proven win for white it doesn't matter if it further simplifies uh, so yeah give up the other rook as well <laughs> so we're still in the winning position a win as they say is a win is a win is a win I don't know if you've heard that one it's quite apt for this game a win is a win is a win uh, so yeah you can say this has been dragged out slightly longer than needed but eventually the checkmate was delivered at move 121 so yes Lila's made this game as entertaining as possible in fact even involving a classic Sten game <laughs> of Wesley Sonic against Cobian in the opening inviting a funny line with d4 with a quirky knight on a4 that we didn't go into that instead we went into what seemed to be like a horrific looking gambit 
But Leela, as cool as a cucumber, is just retreating the bishop to c1 at one point and saying to Black, what have you got? What have you got? What have you got? That was the question in the opening. And in the end game, look, take my rook, take my rook, take my rook. So I found it quite a hilarious game from a number of angles. I hope you found some amusement in it as well. So is Leela the, the funniest engine troll going at the moment? What do you think? Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.